The Promise Keeper, Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who have spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long to belong. Tonight's Nightlight is out of the book of Psalms. It is the Hebrew hymn book of the Old Testament. If you open your Bible to the very middle, you'll most likely land in Psalms. Psalms 105, verses 8 through 11. King David wrote the bulk of the Psalms, but other authors as well. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham, his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan and the lot of your inheritance. He's talking here about God being a promise keeper, a promise keeping covenant making God, a God who loves to call his shots down in the distant corridors of eternity and making those things come to pass by the excellency of his power, by the majesty of his might and by the incredible uh, wisdom that he has. Mark Twain, uh, Paul Chapel writes, was not a Christian. He was raised in the church and was well acquainted with what the Bible says. And though he did not believe, he was able to see how events in the world confirmed what God had said in his word. Regarding the Jewish people, he wrote the Egyptian, the Babylonian, and the Persian rose, filled the planet with sound and splendor, then faded to dream stuff and passed away. The Greek and Roman followed and made a vast noise and they are gone. Other peoples have sprung up and held their torch high for a time, and it burned out, and they sit in twilight now or have vanished. All things are mortal but the Jew. All other forces pass, but he remains. What is the secret of his immortality? And then Paul Chapel writes, the only possible answer to that question is one Twain was unwilling to accept God. God keeps all his promises. And certainly I would agree with, with Paul Chapel that God is a promise-keeping God. He kept his promises to Noah and he put a rainbow in the sky as a mark of the covenant that he would not destroy the world by a flood again. He kept his promise to Abraham to give him a seed that would, uh, that would be bless all nations. He, he kept his promise to David, the Messiah would come from him. He kept his promise to Eve, that, that Messiah would be out of, out of her seed, not Adam's seed. And on and on, you have these promises that were made by God to his people. And then you have the fulfillment of that promise that was kept. In some cases, centuries pass between the giving of the promise and the fulfillment of the promise. And yet God's people remain faithful. How do we remain faithful between the promise and the provision? One pastor said that God's design is the promise that he gives us, and then there are the problems that crop up in the way, and then there's the provision that comes about. And he said that faith is developed in that interim place where the problem crops up. So we know what God has promised us. We know what he wants to take place in our marriage, in our families, in our churches, in, in our ministries. We know those promises that are there because we read the word and we're able to read those promises. And we, we see the, the, uh, the provision of it, uh, the fulfillment of it down the road, but somehow there are these problems that are in the way. And where most people stumble and fall is they allow the problem to be all-consuming and they don't work past it. Instead of seeing past it to the place of fulfillment, God speaks, sees those things which are not and calls them into existence. He, he can speak and, and co the cosmos is created. Certainly he can speak answers into our questions. He can, he can begin to move in a powerful way. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. God is able to bring about that which we can't even see right now. That's a wonderful thing about God. And so I want to encourage you, if you're in a situation where the problems are cropping up all around you, can you think back to what the promise is that God has given you about this specific situation that you're in? And can you look beyond the problems to the provision of God and believe in faith that God is going to bring that to pass? In other words, right now you can't see it. You don't know, have any idea how God would pull it off. But you know what? God specializes in that exact kind of miracle. 
What a good God we serve. Maybe you don't know how God can heal uh, some sick family member. Maybe you don't understand how God can heal uh, your marriage. Maybe you don't understand how God can bring a rebellious child back into right relationship with you. Maybe you don't understand how God can bring provision for the bills that seem to be much larger than your bank account. Uh, God has the ability to bring about provision that you have no idea of, but it does require us to build faith in the problem phase. Promise, problem, provision. Get, learn to look past the problem to the provision, counting on God's promise because he's a promise keeping God. Dear Lord God, I thank you for this night. I thank you for these dear ones. I pray that you would bless them as they rest. Allow them to know that you love them and care for them. Give them a sense of your presence and power right now. Let them look beyond the immediate problems that are overwhelming their mind and allow them to cast back in their mind and remember the promise that you placed in their heart and in your word and allow them to see the provision of that that is down the road by faith and let them ask in faith believing and God give it to them. You tell us to seek, to knock, and to ask, and that you will respond to each of those requests. And we are asking right now for that to take place for these dear brothers and sisters under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. Have a great night.